This is what Jacob says in, uh, to, to the Lord as, as, um, you know, as that's given to him. And this is what he says. Uh, he, says, says this, he says, Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's house, then the Lord will be my God, and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, Lord, I will give you a tenth. And that's what, uh, that's what Jacob says to the Lord. You know what? Hey, this is, this is before the Old Testament law. This is before the days of Moses. Okay, um, and, and even here, uh, Jacob is saying, Lord, if, if, if you bless me, he said, everything that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Well, how many of you, if the Lord will bless your life, you think that's a pretty good deal that you give the Lord a tenth, amen, of all that he blesses with. And so he said, Lord, if you give me food to eat and clothes to wear, and if you take care of my needs, he said, Lord, everything that you give me, uh, I will give you a tenth. And so I love the heart of Jacob right there, and, and that's just the principle of the tithe, 10%, the Bible says, that, that we give to the Lord, that belongs to the Lord, it's already, it's already his, and uh, just as an attitude of thanks of all that God's done for us, uh, in showing that we're, our dependence is upon Him, uh, not on any anyone else. And the Bible's promise, God's promise, that if that if we're faithful to the Lord, He'll be faithful to us. And as we say uh, so many times, we can live better on nine tenths with God's blessing than ten tenths without it. Right? Amen. Ushers, would you come? We're going to get ready to give in our offering today. And if you'd like to give mobile or online, you can do that uh, by uh, following the directions on the screen there. We're going to pray. Lord, we love you today. Uh, God, you know, uh, we know that you've promised to bless us, to meet our need. Uh, Lord, uh, you, you promised that. And God, we just thank you for that today. Uh, Lord, the, the least that we can do, Lord, is honor you with the tithe. And God, you even uh, commanded us to even uh, honor you with offerings, Lord. And so today, we honor you with our tithe. We honor you with offerings that, that we give at times that's even above and beyond the tithe. Uh, Lord, we just say thank you for your blessing in our life, Lord. We're so grateful. Uh, you're so good to us, Lord. I just pray that you'd bless everyone here today. God, I pray for people that may be, may be new Christians or new believers or people that are just learning to trust you with their finances. Uh, that, Lord, as they step out in faith, and your word said, try me and see. As they step out in faith and honor you with their giving, with their tithes, with their offering, I just pray, Lord, that you'd bless them, God, bring blessing into their life, bring favor into their life uh, in so many ways, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you for it. Amen and amen. Lord bless you as you give, as you give in the, uh, in the, in the, offering, in the offering today. And uh, uh, so I think this is on. We'll just go with this one this morning. So, <clears throat> all right. Well, praise the Lord. Well, hey, we're going to get ready to go to the Word of God this morning. Uh, I hope that you got an outline for the message coming in. Uh, if you didn't, some of our ushers have one, and uh, if you'd like one, they can pass them out to you uh, uh, this morning. But uh, uh, we're going to get ready to go to the Word of God. We're going to go to First Timothy, First uh, Timothy, uh, chapter one. We're going to start there, reading uh, verse eighteen and. In 19, so you can take your Bibles, your iPhone, uh, your iPads, and uh, whatever you got, and, and turn, turn to 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1, and we'll start reading at verse 18. Uh, uh, this, this week, if you'd like a copy of the outline, just raise your hand and, and uh, just keep it up till they find you. Uh, this week, I, I just felt led to go a different direction in, a, in, our, in our service today. Um, and so I'm going to do that today and, and just kind of follow uh, the direction that I feel the Holy Spirit leading. But uh, uh, this, this morning, for the next uh, little bit, uh, I'm going to uh, just uh, speak to us and encourage us about uh, fighting the good fight for the Lord. And at the end of our service here, we're going to take communion. Uh, we generally do that every first Sunday of the month. Uh, we're going to do it uh, uh, today. Uh, but uh, um, so we're going to dive into, into the Word of God here. I got uh, some things that I just want to. Uh, share on my heart, and I, I pray that it'll be a, uh, just a, a, a blessing to you, all right? So 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 18 through 19, uh, and this is Paul writing to Timothy. Timothy is a young man in ministry uh, who Paul mentored 
Uh, set, the book of 2 Timothy is the last book that Paul wrote before he was beheaded in Rome in the basement of the Mamertine prison. Uh, is the last letter that, that Paul uh, wrote, and it was to Timothy, also encouraging him in ministry. And I think it's really powerful when we understand that context in, in Paul's encouragement to Timothy here, okay, because uh, Paul knows this is kind of uh, his last chance to encourage, to inspire, uh, uh, to motivate, to exhort. Um, Timothy is a young man in his work for God. And so with that background, uh, we'll, we'll dive in here. So 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18 through 19. Timothy, my son. So he's talking about his spiritual son here. He said, I give you this instruction or this charge in keeping with the prophecies once made about you. I want you to notice that line. In keeping with the prophecies once made about you so that by following them, you might fight the good fight. Would you say that with me? Fight the good fight. Holding on to faith and a good conscience, some have rejected these and so have shipwrecked their faith. I want you to notice that part there where he says, I give you this charge uh, uh, so that, okay, in keeping with the, prof, uh, with the promises once made about you, okay, that by following them you may fight the good fight. Would you just, would you just pray with me right now uh, over the Lord's word as we... Get ready to, to just bring it this morning. Lord Jesus, uh, God, I, I, just, I just feel like you have a special word for us today. Uh, Lord, I, I believe you have a word of encouragement for people in this place today. Uh, and Holy Spirit, I just pray that you would just come right now. Just uh, direct me and anoint me and, and help me uh, in, in uh, your gift and calling this morning as I, as I preach the word of God today. I pray that lives would be touched, impacted, encouraged, Lord. I pray for breakthroughs in this place today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray that people in the service would experience breakthrough, God, in their life uh, as needed, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I like this uh, passage of Scripture, and we're going to read more here in 1 Timothy and in 2 Timothy because uh, in multiple places in the book of 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, uh, Paul encourages Tim Timothy to fight a good fight, to war a good warfare, to be a good soldier, uh, to persevere, okay? Um, all of those things, uh, we, we, we read about those emphasis uh, all through the book of 1 and 2 Timothy. It's at the end of 2 Timothy that Paul... Uh, gives the great statement. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have worn a, I have, I have warred a good warfare, and now the prize of heaven is awaiting me. And those are, the, those are the last words that Paul wrote before he was beheaded for Jesus Christ. Okay? Um, and, and he knows, uh, he knows uh, his time that is ahead that he's, he's about to face. And so he encourages uh, uh, Timothy uh, with, with these words. I want you to notice in verse 18, uh, as we read here in chapter 1, that he says, I give you this instruction, he said, in keeping, and I want you to notice, he said, with the prophecies that are once made about you. He said, this is, so this is what he's saying, this is what he's affirming. He's saying, Timothy, uh, God has spoken into your life, he's spoken promises, he's spoken direction, he's spoken plans into your life. That's what he's talking about. And he's reminding uh, Timothy here, he's saying, Timothy, those prophecies, those plans, uh, those things that, that God has for you that were affirmed in your life by people that prayed over you, uh, that prophetically may have affirmed them in, in your life, he said, uh, he said, I encourage you, I exhort you uh, in the name of Jesus that you fight a good fight and war a good warfare and hang on to those prophecies, those promises that were spoken into your life, that were spoken about you, that were spoken over you. Uh, I just want to, uh, I wonder how many of you are sitting here today that God spoke a, a word into your heart, that God spoke a promise into your life, uh, that um, uh, as somebody prayed over you and prophetically uh, spoke something into your life. Uh, from, from the Lord. I wonder how many of you here are sitting here today that have had that happen to you, have experienced that. 
I wonder how many of you are sitting here today that feel like that, that you have something that God spoke into your heart, maybe a dream that He gave you, um, a, 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 an impression that, that the Holy Spirit put, up, put upon your life, okay, uh, that, that, he's, that, he's, that He's placed there. How, I'm sure probably most of us that are sitting here today have experienced that or had that. In fact, the Bible says in Jeremiah that the Lord says this, I know the what? Plans I have for you, says the Lord. Everybody say plans. Plans. God has plans for you. He has plans for me. He has plans for us. And God said, I know the plans I have for you. Okay? Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you hope. Plans to give you a future. Hey, that's God's heart for us. How many think that's pretty awesome? That's God's heart for all of us. All right? Now, now, stay with me here, okay? Just because God made you a promise or a word has been spoken over you or a prophetic promise or word has been spoken to you does not mean that it will come easy or that you will not have to face opposition along the way to attain that or see it come to pass. Now, it would be great if that wasn't the case, right? Okay, but because we live in a fallen world and because we live in a, in, in, in a spiritual uh, world where warfare is taking place in the next two Sundays, I'll be speaking on the spiritual world. I'll be speaking about angels. I'll be speaking about demons. I'll be speaking about Satan's kingdom. I'm going to speak about, about God's kingdom, okay? Okay. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna look at the uh, real spiritual world that is out there that that uh, that that we can't see in the natural, but it's there, and we deal with it. Uh, the evil that we uh, see going on in our world today, uh, and that takes place is 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 part of a result of that. Okay, and so we're gonna get into that. We'll we'll talk about demons, demonology, witchcraft, the occult. Uh, we'll, we'll get into some of that, okay? Halloween glorifies a lot of that. I just want to remind everybody here today, that spiritual world is real. That spiritual world is real. And even angels in heaven do not take Satan's kingdom uh, lightly, albeit, okay, all power in heaven and earth belongs to Jesus all right, and to the Lord, okay, and at the very mention of the name of Jesus, the Bible says, demons tremble. So just going around saying his name a lot, okay, right, okay, we're going to talk a little bit about angels that God has placed to watch over us and be with us and cover us and protect us. How many like to hear about that? You know, some people, all they see is a demon behind every bush and tree. They're real spiritual. The only problem is that they never see the, the kingdom of God, all right? Uh, they, they, uh, I, and so I, I don't have time. I, I can't detour. I'm going to start preaching the next couple of weeks here, all right? Um, but I, I'm, glad, I'm glad right now that there are angels that are assigned to me. And that for every angel that was kicked out of heaven, which was, which was one-third of all the angels that kicked out of heaven was Satan, the Bible says that there are two angels that stand behind me and back me up. So for every one that comes against me, there are two standing behind me, backing me up. Amen? Praise the Lord. And, uh, uh, and, and, and so, but here's the reality is, is that we live in a, in a world of spiritual confrontation, okay, opposition, uh, and things that are out there. Because sin entered the world, okay, uh, a sickness and, and, uh, and a lot of other things followed that as a result, a result of that, which means this, okay? That in our spiritual life, okay, we do fight a spiritual battle and a spiritual warfare. And it comes in many different ways, in many different forms at times, okay. Uh, and, and here's part of the deal. I want to just remind us again, okay. The Bible says Satan is our adversary, that he comes against us, that he fights against us. First of all, he does that against all of God's creation, because he hates creation from the earth itself to, all, to, to every man and woman on this earth. Because every man and woman on this earth is created in the image of God. And Satan hates God. And since he can't defeat God, the only way that really he can get back at God is by hurting God's creation. Which is you and I. Okay? 
the, the Bible says that he comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. That's his mission statement. Okay? Jesus' mission statement was, I come to give life and life more abundantly. How many like that? Okay, I, I, I like that. So here's the deal. So understanding that picture and understanding that context, when God confirms a promise or a blessing in your life, Satan will bring opposition against it in some way, at some time, somehow. Okay? That, that's, that's just, part of it is a fact of life, and the other part of it is a fact of being a believer and a child of God. Okay? Uh, now, but here's the deal. God's on our side. We read the end of the book. We win. We win. Okay? We win. All right? Because we live in a fallen world, though, we will face challenge. We will face difficulties. Okay? Uh, uh, and at, at some point in, in, in our life. And, and again, it may come in, in various ways. Okay? Uh, I'll get on this more, but there are three facets that we fight in, in, our, in, in the world in, in spiritual battles. You can write these down. It's not in your notes, okay? All right? First of all, we battle against, we battle against Satan. We battle against the world, and we battle against our flesh. We battle against Satan's kingdom, okay? We battle against the world because we live in a fallen world, so we battle against the world, Okay? It's sinful nature, it's ideologies, that, you know, against the Lord, all those kind of things. And then we battle against our flesh, our, our sinful flesh that needs, you know, uh, we, we need a Savior, okay? All right, sometimes this flesh doesn't want to do what the Spirit of God uh, wants me to do. How many know that? And that's in the Scripture, okay? So we, we fight those three things, okay? And so in this passage of Scripture, Paul, understanding all that context, encourages Timothy, okay, to hang on to the prophecies that were made about you, okay, and to fight a good fight and war a good warfare. In other words, Paul is encouraged in Timothy to see those things through. I want to ask you this morning, what has God spoken into your life? What plans has He told you about? What promises has He given you? I want to encourage you this morning to fight the good fight and see them through. What blessings has God given to you? Well, if you're married here today, you've got a spouse. You can be thankful for that. If you have children today, you can be thankful for your kids. Amen. Uh, a, a, godly, a, godly, a godly heritage, all right? And, and uh, we fight for our marriage. We fight for our home. We fight for our families. All of those things, okay? He's saying fight a good fight, war a good warfare. Let me just say this this morning. <clears throat> uh, just remind us all here today that there is no army without a soldier. There is no army without a soldier. Now, I grew up in, I grew up in church because my mom and dad were pastors uh, and still are. And so I, go, I grew up going to children's church and where we sang a lot of children's church uh, uh, songs and kids' songs. Uh, some of them uh, they still sing today once in a while. Some of them we don't. But we used to sing this, uh, this children's church song when I was a little kid in children's church entitled, I'm in the Lord's Army. All right? Okay? And I, I don't remember all the words to, to all of it, but, but the chorus would go, I'm in the Lord's Army. Yes, sir. I'm, I, I can still remember some of those. See, those things get, thank God for all those children's church teachers, you know. I'm in the Lord's Army, you know. Uh, and it goes something like this. Um, my mind just went blank. Somebody might have to help me. I may never, f in the infantry, fly, ride in the cavalry. You got it. All right. I may never do any of those things, but I'm in the Lord's army. Okay, I can't remember. It's been too long. So I had it earlier today. I, I had it. But, but I'm in the Lord's army. And so little kids singing that, you know. And, and I want to remind us that now that we've grown up to be big kids, we are still in the Lord's army. Okay? And, 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 we're, and we're called to be, to be soldiers, all right, for the, for, the kingdom of, for the kingdom of God and to fight a good fight and to, to war a good warfare. You know, there are a lot of songs that some of us learned being in children's church that would probably be good for us to remember and sing once in a while, even as adults. 
Kind of like the one, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, it's an emotion, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Why? The Bible tells me so. You know what happens for a lot of adults? Life comes their way. And after life comes their way and they go through some battles and they go through the, some hardships and maybe they, they lose some battles and they have some defeats here and there, you know what? Sometimes as adults, we don't believe that song anymore. You know, Jesus doesn't love me anymore. He, he can't love me anymore, maybe because of what's happened in my life or what I did or so. But I want to tell everyone this morning, that is not true. Jesus does love you. Amen. And we are called to be in the Lord's army. Amen. I love Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 is full of what that chapter we call is full of what's called the Hall of Famers. They were, they, were, they were men and women who were great warriors, warriors for God, all right? And, and they did great things for God, and they, and they had great faith in times of adversity or challenge. In times of adversity or challenge, and they, and they sought that through. They, they walked through that. They, they persevered, like Paul is telling Timothy, fight the good fight, hold on to faith with a good conscience. Some have rejected it, he said, and have, have, have walked away. But he's telling Timothy, you don't, you don't do that. You stay in there. You, you hang on to it. You persevere. Okay? And, and in Hebrews chapter 11, is full of Hall of Famers of the faith that did that very thing. You know, it says that Abraham, you know, Abraham called things that were not as though they were. You know, that's, that's, that's faith. That's why they're called heroes, heroes of, of faith, okay? And you know what? Sometimes when you're walking in a time of not, you have to see things as they're going to be, as God has promised, as God has said would happen. Can I get an amen? Here's what Satan always comes and does, and he's, so God speaks something. And Satan comes along, and this is what he says. Hath God said? He didn't really say that. Nah, that wasn't really God. That was something else. That was somebody else. You know, God didn't really say that. God didn't really speak that in your life. He didn't really speak that in your family. Uh, you know, that's not really going to happen. That really wasn't God. Let me tell you something. If God spoke something, He's able to bring it to pass in your life, for you, about you, your kids, your family, your marriage. Okay? You just have to do what Jesus did and look him back in the face and say, It is written or it is spoken. All right? Revelations chapter 12, verse 7. We'll get into this more in the next couple of, couple of weeks. Uh, uh, but I just want to remind us of, of this. Revelations chapter 12. Is any soldiers here in the house this morning? No? Okay, all right. So any soldiers for Jesus in the house this morning, all right? Okay, there we go. Revelations chapter 12, verse 7. John said this, And there was, say it, War, there was war in heaven. And Michael and his angels, that is, that is, Michael is, I, I love this guy. How many are named Michael here today? All right, we got, there's quite a few of them. I have a word of the Lord for Michael, all right, right now. So you could probably just say something. It'd probably fit somebody. There's so many Michaels in the church here today, okay? But, but Michael is always seen in Scripture as God's warfaring angel, Okay? Whenever Michael shows up in the Bible, it's because he's got a sword. Okay, he, he's read, he is God's warring angel. He's going to carry out business. Gabriel in the Bible is what? God's messenger angel. All throughout the Bible, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, Gabriel shows up and he speaks a word. He's bringing a message. He did it with Daniel, Daniel chapter 10. Okay, he did it to Mary when he told her that she was going to give birth to Jesus. We see he is God's messenger angel, but Michael is God's warfaring angel. I like that guy. It said, Michael and his angels, that is the angels of heaven, angels of God, fought against the dragon, that is Satan. And it says, and the dragon and his angels, what? Fought back. Well, you can't really have much of a fight if one side doesn't fight. I, I mean, there was a big, big fight, a UFC fight last weekend, and people were watching. But you know what? If two guys go into the ring and one guy doesn't fight, that's really no fight. 
to have a fight, you got to have two people that are fighting each other and fighting back. And it says here in this passage of Scripture that there was a war in heaven, and, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, okay, and his angels, and the dragon and his angels fought back. The, I want you to notice this. Satan fought back. And, and so when we talk about fighting a good fight and war and a good warfare, here's the deal. In our life, at some point, sometime or another, there's going to be a time when we have confrontation with the kingdom of darkness, when, when we battle Satan and, 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 and his kingdom. Now, Satan's not omnipresent. He's not everywhere at once. He's in one place at one time. He's a created being, created by God, all right? But he has, he has legions, that is, thousands of of, of angels and demonic forces that, that fight and work on His behalf that Scripture tells us are stationed in certain parts of the world, over certain cities and certain communities and certain places. That's why when you go into certain places, you may feel, a, a, you know, there's a spirit there or there's a different spirit there. That's why the Bible talks about differing spirits and, and so forth. There's a spirit there. Why is that? Okay. Um, uh, because, uh, listen, uh, you know, Satan uh, has dispersed his kingdom. But you know what? God's done the same thing. In Daniel chapter 10, when Daniel's praying, it says, and, and finally the angel Gabriel comes to Daniel after praying. He prayed for 21 days. And what Daniel didn't know was that for 21 days, there was spiritual warfare going on in the heavenly realm where Gabriel was being confronted by the prince or the principality of Persia that would not let Gabriel through. And Gabriel says this, I was resisted for 21 days, but then Michael showed up. That's what Gabriel says. And now I've been able to come to speak to you. And I want you to, and this is what the Lord says. How many, how many just need Michael to come and show up in your situation right now? Amen. Okay. And we're going to make a t-shirt about, well, we don't want to worship Michael. We worship Jesus. Okay. But we like Michael too. All right. But he said, Michael, Michael shows up. But here it says that there was war in heaven that, that Michael and his angels fought against uh, uh, Satan and, and his angels, but they fought, they fought back. Hey, I just want to remind everybody here today, Satan will fight against you. I've heard some people say, well, I'm just afraid to step out and do this in ministry because I'm going to face so much spiritual attack from Satan. What? So I'm going to be intimidated to not do anything for Jesus before I ever get it started because I might face some kind of spiritual opposition. That's, that's not how God's called us to live. Can I get an amen? All right. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. All right. Uh, uh, and, and we have the power to, to rebuke the devil and to resist him. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, James says, resist the devil and he will flee. He'll have to flee. He's got to go. Okay. But some people are, are, are kind of that, that way at times. And I'm like, hey, man, you've got to spin that around. You're defeated before you ever begin. We're on, the, we're, on the, we're on the winning side. God has got our back. God is for us. Jesus is for us, all right? Uh, there are angels that are dispersed by Jesus to walk with us, to, to be with us, to, to guard us, to fight for us. One of these days, we are all going to get to heaven, and we're going to be able to play some of the screen back in our lifetime and see where God protected us. God watched out for us, even at times when we didn't know it, okay? Uh, I, I'm thankful for that. But there's war that's going on. Satan's going to fight against us. I want to ask you this morning, okay? Everybody look my, this way. This kind of question. I want to ask you this morning. Do you have a game face? Now, some of you I've played ball with, played softball with, you know, Church City League softball, some of you guys out there. Some of you guys, you get out there in the sports field, it's like you turn into another person, man. It's like... Wow, who are you? You need to be that excited for Jesus. I mean, why don't you be even that intense for God? I mean, guys, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. Uh, you go to some church league, you know, basketball, softball. Some, some guys act like it's, the, you know, the World Series, the Super Bowl. You know, guys, it's just a game. Come on, they got their game face on, you know. Okay, I'm not going to keep going on there. But you, you get what I'm saying. Do you have a game face? In other words, when you step on the field, when you step on the court, there's kind of something that switches, all right? There's a competitive juice that starts flowing there. I like, you know, competition, okay? All right? And so, uh, yeah, there, there's a game face. 
Um, uh, it's kind of, uh, you know, it, it can be that way when you're preaching, okay? Kind of, you know, on, on Sundays, my mentality kind of changes a bit. My, my, my family will tell you that as I go into later, like Saturday evening, Saturday night, um, you know, I know Sunday's coming, and I'm mentally just starting to kind of check out a lot of times on what's going on during the day because I'm thinking about Sunday, uh, and, and they'll tell you that's it, that's that, that that's the case, all right? You see guys out there in the NFL today, they'll be taking the field, and they'll be putting on, I mean, they got their game face. Fans show up, and they got their game face. You know, I, I watch some NFL football stuff, and you see men in the stands, even at Bronco Stadium, and they dress up like Elvis Presley. They put on paint and all kinds of stuff and makeup, you know, because that's their game face for their team, you know, whatever, okay? But do you have a game face when it comes to spiritual warfare? Let me, let me take it to another, another level. Do you have a war face? I mean, when you get to a point where you've, you've, you've had stuff going on in your life or there's been opposition to maybe that prophetic word that was spoken into your life, that dream that was spoken over you, or the dreams that God put in your heart that you have, and now something's challenging them, something's confronting them, Satan's come against you. You, you have kind of a war face where after a while, you, don't, you know, it's not like you cower down and, oh, he's picking on me so much, you know, I just, but no, where you just kind of rise up, the spirit man or woman rises up within you and you kind of say, man, enough is enough. Where you, where you just spiritually, uh, you, know, uh, you know, pick up your armor and your sword and you go to prayer and, and, and you fight and you fight back for what's been promised to you or spoken over you or given to you. <clears throat> you got to fight for what God's promised you. It's not always just going to come easy. I mean, there's going to be hardships that will come. There will be, there'll be setbacks. And I've watched some of you over the years that I've known for a long time Man, you've gone through setbacks and hardships, and, and, uh, and you didn't quit on God, and you didn't quit on your dreams, and you didn't quit on your calling, and you've stayed in there, and you've followed after God, and you've served God, and you didn't quit like Paul said. Other people have quit. Other people have walked away from what was spoken over them or spoken into them, but you didn't walk away. You didn't walk away from God, even into your discouraged. Everybody gets discouraged. Everybody goes through hard times. Everybody gets depressed. But at some point, you got to pick yourself up by the Spirit of God. Put your game face on. And fight for your kids. And how many got sons and daughters? You fight for them. You pray for them. You pray over them. We dedicated them to the Lord when they were babies. And you keep praying for them. And you keep fighting for them until God calls them home or until he calls us home. And you pray over that prophetic word that was spoken in their life. Pray over your marriage. Pray over your health. Man, there's been a lot of health stuff lately. Rick, it's good to see you in church this morning, buddy, sitting right there. For those of you don't know, know, that don't know Rick, uh, who's also one of the board members of our church, had a serious heart attack on Thursday morning after working out at, at the gym right here. Just right, uh, actually, I'm right here on the corner, and left there, a lot of chest pain, all that kind of stuff, and knew it was not good, and drove himself to St. Al's, called his wife, said, I'm not feeling good, I'm going to go to St. Al's, but you don't have to worry, don't come, you know. How many of you guys know that just doesn't work, all right? Yeah. (laughs) I know, it's just a man thing, it's just a man thing, and then he gets there and says, well, you probably better come, but anyway, all right. But, uh, you know, there was blockage in Rick's heart, and, and uh, the doctors told him years ago that would have been it. You've been telling everybody goodbye. That's what they said, huh? Uh, but that wasn't the case, and, and because of, we believe because of prayer and also because of, of you know, the modern, what doctors who are gifted are able to do today. You know, Rick is, is here today, and, and uh, so, yeah, but there's been uh, health issues, and, and we're going to pray for some other specific ones today, but we're, we're believing for perfect health in Rick's life, all right? We're believing for perfect health in that heart, that there will be no damage, no complication, all right, and uh, that he'll keep war in a good warfare for Jesus. Sometimes you got to fight through that uh, and, and, and go through that. You know, you got to fight for your ministry. Fight for your calling, all right? Fight for your gift uh, you, and, and persevere for that, okay? All right? Uh, if God's spoken, you hang on to what God's spoken into your life. Sometimes people may speak something into your life that goes against that. You got to listen to God more than you listen to people. 
I, over the years, I mean, years ago, and I, was, I had people tell me to quit. You know, I, I had somebody tell me, I don't think you got what it takes. I had people speak that stuff in, into my life, you know. But, but here's the deal. Uh, you know, even, as, even when I was young and green behind the ears, and I, you know, I had a lot to learn and a lot, lot, you know, a lot of ways that I needed to grow. But there is one thing that I did know, that God had spoken something into my heart. And until God changed what he spoken into my heart, I wasn't going anywhere. So I would, be like, I, would, I would be like Jacob. I would be holding on to the angel of the Lord's leg saying, I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going anywhere. I'm hanging on until you bless me, until we get through this. I'm not going anywhere. And that's how some of you, some of you that have been here for a while, while you've seen the clip of when I rode the wild, uh, uh, rode in the wild horse race in the Caldwell Night Rodeo. Uh, they don't do it anymore because it's too dangerous and it's stupid. But anyway, okay. But but being like most of us men when I was younger back in the day, you know, um, me and a couple of my other buddies, and we had horses and mules, and I broke stuff and whatever. So we thought it would be fun, and so we got entered. And a long story short is they have these wild horses in the chute, okay? Uh, you got six teams out there. They blow the horn. You run up to the chute. You open the chute. One guy grabs the lead rope, and these wild horses coming out of there bucking and rearing, okay? One guy holds onto the rope. Another guy climbs up on the horse and either covers his eyes or twists his ear to get him to stop and stand still and hope that that horse doesn't bite him in the process, which many of them would, and that leaves more than a mark. I'll just tell you that, all right? And then the other guy throws the saddle on the horse, tightens the saddle right fast, and jumps in on the saddle, and they let him go, and you're supposed to stay on it till the horse gets to the other end of the arena. They have a line that they draw. Uh, and so anyway, so the first night that I did that, here's the story I'm just telling it, is it took us a while to get on the horse. The saddle, it was the first night, and the cinch was too long, so it wouldn't get tight. The saddle wouldn't get tight. Everybody else had lost their horses. We are the only team left. And so I, I couldn't tighten it up anymore. And I thought, well, we'll just get on it and try it. All right. How many know that's not a good thing to do? Okay. So, man, I jumped in the saddle, and they let the horse go. And so the finish line's down there. And the horse took, went right alongside the bucking chutes, right, right to, the, to the fence line over here, and just hard as he could go bucking. And then he just turned hard like this, headed toward the other end of the arena. Well, when he did, the saddle started going like this. And so I got one hand, hey, this is a lesson in life, and I cannot tell you how many times this one story has helped me in my own life. And I got one hand on the saddle horn, and I had, had the latigos in the back tied together so I could hold back there so he couldn't throw me off over the front and throw me off over the back. Okay, that wasn't the problem here. So I'm holding on, and, and so this horse does a hard left and heads to the other end of the arena. And the place is just screaming, and I'm in the saddle, and the saddle starts going like this. And I hear the announcer go, he's not going to make it. He's not going to make it. That's all I could hear. You know what? There's a lot of people out there that are saying that to you. You're not going to make it. You're not going to make it for whatever reason. You're not gonna, you know what? There was something just inside of me at that moment because I was young and dumb and some of that that just said, you know what? I ain't letting go. You know, most people would have let go. He's not going to, I just held, I'm going to hang on as long as I, this is all on video, by the way, too. I've showed it in this church. I'm just hanging on and hanging, and here's the bottom line. My head hit the dirt at the finish line, and then I let go. And the place went crazy, all right, you know, it went crazy, okay? And here's, and here, here's the deal. Just sometimes in life, and I, I preached a message one, one time entitled, Just Hang In There. And sometimes you just got to ride stuff through, Right? You just got to ride it out. You just got to ride, ride, ride. And I wasn't going to, I wasn't bailing out of the, out of the saddle. I just, yeah, I don't know. It was just instinct. I, you know what? I believe there is such a thing as Holy Spirit instinct. Sometimes it just comes into play when we go to prayer. Something pops up and we just start praying or we start praying in the Spirit or something happens and at that moment the Holy Spirit says, do this, don't do that, go here. No, don't go there. It's Holy Spirit Holy Spirit uh, 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 instinct, all right? Okay, listen, you got to fight for it. you got to hang on to it. You just hang in there. God's got plans for you. He's for you. He's going to bless you. He's going to see you through. He's going to use you. You are a somebody going somewhere, doing something big for His glory. <clears throat> Amen. And my Bible says, No weapon formed against you or me will prosper. Ephesians 6.18 says prayer is a weapon of force. 
the Bible is full of intercessory prayer warriors. Moses was a prayer warrior. Esther was a prayer warrior. Daniel was a prayer warrior. Jesus interceded for Peter. Uh, just prayer warriors. Listen, we battle through prayer. No spiritual battle is ever won without prayer. I don't care how buff we are, how much we go to the gym, how many miles we run. Okay, reading our Bible is awesome too. We need to have that. But Jesus prayed. He couldn't do his life without prayer. We can't do our life without prayer. Peter had an anointed shadow when he walked by the street. People just got healed as his shadow touched people. You know why? Because Peter had an anointed uh, prayer life. Prayer is our, our weapon, okay? 2 Corinthians 10, 4 says, Our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We don't fight with physical weapons. We fight with spiritual weapons, the Word of God and prayer. So listen, I want to tell you, I want to encourage you, stay full of the Word of God and keep praying. When you're going through a hard time, when you're going through a difficult time, you just keep praying. You go find a place of prayer and you pray through and you fight and you fight on your knees and you pray and seek God. You know, our worship team played two songs that's on my personal prayer list. So worship today was probably a little more special for me than it was you. Some of you may be going, I don't even know that song. You know, I, I, that, that song doesn't. And everybody's got different songs. And you have, but in the morning, I get up early most of the time, and I leave the house. My wife and kids will tell you that. Most of the time, I'll go and get a cup of coffee, and there's a place in the parking lot where I go and sit and park in the car and in my truck. And it's the place where I pray. It's a place where I meet with God. That little parking spot area out there is kind of sacred to me. I can look out kind of over the valley, one of the place, and it's a place where I worship, and it's the place where I pray. And some days my prayer life is awesome, man. You know, you're going to thank you, God, for all that you're doing, and you're praying for, you know, loved ones and ministry and church and praying for you, God, and all that. And so sometimes it's like that. How many know what I'm saying? And other times you go to prayer and you can't even hardly pray. Because you're going through something that's so heavy, so tough, so difficult, or there's an obstacle that's come against you. Maybe it's a person or a situation. And I want to remind you today that our warfare is not always personal. It's not about a person or an individual. Maybe not even about a situation. It's spiritual. Go to God in a spiritual realm and let Him deal with it in the natural realm. There have been times I would sit. I don't have a chair up here. I just sit. So I sit in the driver's seat. Sometimes I just sit there, worship, and pray. Sometimes I'll just listen to worship, whatever. And worship team, you guys can go ahead and start making your way up here. Um, and I'll worship and, and, and pray. And, and, and then other, other times, you know, uh, sometimes I'll just sit there and be quiet and do what Psalm says, Sila before God. That word Sila means pause, be quiet, think about what you just read. That's what it means. And so sometimes I'll do, just do that. There have been other times, man, where I've, where I've, I've sat there and... and, and just poured my heart out, out to God. Uh, you know, times where I just prayed and asked for God's help. Sometimes I couldn't say anything else, but, but help, help me, God. 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 Help us, God. Help us, God. Help us, God. That's all I can pray sometimes. If you pray in the Spirit, what is that? That's going to war, man. That's going to war. And then the other times you go back going, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for answering that prayer. Thank you, God, for helping me. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. God, you're so good. Thank you, good. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Isn't that good? We are never more powerful than when we pray. You know, we've seen a lot of good things happen in our church in this last year. In a lot of ways, people getting saved, uh, uh, miracles taking place. Uh, we've seen a, a, just a, a huge growth in our finances in this, in this past year. There have been a lot of great things that have happened uh, in our church in this past year. But you know what? I turn it all back, and I've said it to many people, to our 21 days of prayer and fasting at the start of 2018. Because nothing can replace that. There are other things we need to do, but nothing can replace that. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, and I get ready to close, and gentlemen, those who are going to serve communion, would you get ready, please? just to help us with our time. In, in, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul goes on and encourages uh, Timothy with these words. He says, But you men of God, how many men of God do we have here today? How many women of God do we have here today? 
that you, man, a woman of God, flee from all of this, talking about things we'll deal with in, 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 uh, you know, even in the last days. Flee from all of this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Listen, I want to tell you right now, everybody look at me. There's one thing that Satan would really love to steal from you and win in your life in, defeat you, and that's this, in your salvation. Paul just tells Timothy, take hold of salvation. Get a hold of it and never let it go. Storms of life will come. Hardships will come. Hurts will come. People may discourage you. People, they will discourage you at times if you live long enough. Things will come your way and, 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 you know, something bad may happen. Doesn't mean God did it. Okay? Listen, God is for you. If you hang on to your salvation, you don't let Satan use anything in your life to discourage you from your salvation because God wants you to spend eternity in heaven with him. Satan doesn't want you to make heaven. You hang in there and hold on to your salvation. You make it. In the sight of God who gives life to everything and of Christ Jesus, who will testify before Pontius Pilate, who testified while testifying before Pontius Pilate made this good confession, he, Paul said, I charge you, or I command you, keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the bottom line, church. I want to encourage everyone here today. Be a good soldier for God until Jesus shows up. You keep fighting the good fight. You keep warring the good warfare. Whatever comes your way. This past week, yesterday, my friend, Pastor Stan, who pastors in CUNA, a good friend of mine, had to do a funeral for a 19-year-old teenage Christian young man in their church who last Monday was killed in a car accident in Nampa, ran a stop sign and was broadsided by a truck and was killed instantly. Mom and dad, uh, very active, worked in the church in our network. Um, they had a son and a daughter and they lost their son. I can't even imagine what Jake's parents have gone through uh, past week. And so, isn't it amazing? Last Sunday in church, they were all worshiping together as a family. Yesterday, that family was burying their son. I said, Dad, I, I can't even imagine what that'd be like, and I don't. That's how fast life can change. Hey, one day Rick's running five miles on the treadmill. The next day, he's all of a sudden he's in the hospital. Like we're kind of like, what's going on? This is almost kind of crazy. But listen. Whatever it is, we fight a good fight. We war a good warfare. We finish strong for God. In this passage of Scripture, he, he says to, to Timothy, he says, he says, pursue righteousness, faith, godliness, love, and endurance. Everybody say endurance. 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 Hey, you ever get tired? Yeah. Yeah. Physically, spiritually, yeah. Sure. You just endure. You stay in there. Keep, keep following after God. Keep following after God. Jesus said, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Fight the good fight. Hang in there. You haven't seen a breakthrough yet. Don't quit. You keep fighting. You keep persevering. You keep hanging in there. Grow not weary and well-doing, for in due season you're going to see God's plans come to fruition in your life if you don't quit.